and I see a lot of scholars, they think, well, I've got my span, I'm right. But what they don't do is check the spread. So even though your span may be the money, but it was pretty good because it worked it out real quick. So that's the spread. And this is a good way to measure spread. If you're going to buy a tape measure, if you can get a tape measure that has English and metric on it, that's the best way to go. I love the active tool uh, spread meters or spread sticks. They're pretty dice. You know, that's, that's, you're talking 80 bucks. And not many people can afford that, and I can appreciate that. But it's really easy. Just you can go to the dollar store. I mean, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're in a pinch, go to the dollar store. I buy all the dollar tape measures. They have to last a couple weeks, but with the coaches, a week is a lifetime. So, okay. And you're just putting it here, and you're measuring the distance from here to here, divided right in the middle. It's a whole lot easier to do it with metric. A whole lot easier than John. I don't have my glasses. What do we got here? That's what? What's the inches? 25. 25. And what's the next one? Yeah. 64. Okay, so it's a whole lot easier to figure out half of 64 than half of 25. Okay. So once we have that, so 64, which the half of that is. Oh, very good. All right. right? So I just put it here. I take my thumb and I smush it right down on that. The 32 is right there. And I just run right out here. Now, what do we have in the center here? 85. Okay. So this is a gals boat. And I'll say right now, I don't I don't recommend any numbers, but I'll tell you the numbers for this boat, 85. So if we were to look, if you're in a real picture, oh my gosh, we gotta go and this rigger's got all jammed up or something, you don't think something's right. You set one, and if I really quickly want to check, and Chris Horsnowski did this to what we were at some race. Chris actually, I should have said this to him. We were at some one world championship. Or handles were wood. Uh, the, the length of the oar was fixed. He came up to me and said, oh my god, the wind, it just changed. It's, it's, it's a headwind. Cut, cut an inch off the oar handle. <laughs> Got it. 45 minutes later, he said, it's, put it back on. <laughs> I don't got it. So, you know, things have changed a little bit, but here's a, here's a trick. If you want to see if everything's in line, you can just come down here. I know that this spread's right, and I'm pretty sure six is right, but you can just look underneath, and you can see if everything's in line, if you want a real quick thing. This is good when they walk out of the boathouse, and you hear, and then you hear, right? okay. put it down, let's just check. Before you go yelling at anybody, figure it out. Okay, that's a, that's a good little... A good little way to check for John. But when you're in a situation where things get moved all around, the people, I put the spread all the same. The one place where it is good, and I'll get to height in a sec, it is good to vary the height. Okay. The, the big thing would, would be more important than spread. But I, it matters from one point, I'll take that back. This is a great place to help your novice, especially as you get back in the water, realize that that's not good. Okay. And if those weren't there, they'd be up here. Okay. Like this much. You say, oh, 10 centimeters, how am I gonna how am I gonna really get them to do that? Well, the front stops give you the, the line of demarcation with, with, with which to get them to. On the other hand, if you're out in the launch, you know, everybody's flexibility is different, they compress differently, you'll see different things. So if you put a if you have this line across here, you can put a little piece of tape on a white boat, a piece of black tape right here, and as your launch is off to the side, you can actually see the center line of the hips, whether it goes through the catch or not. And you're, what you want to do is make sure they're all getting to the same point like he's talking about. He wants his girls 10 centimeters through that pin there, through the catch. And if you've got a kid that's back here, and yet you want them up here, you've got to make a change to try and get them up there. Either they're inflexible, or the feet are in the wrong spot, or whatever. So going off to the side of the boat, looking at the boat either from the pin side or if you have them in the other, you can actually see if you have tape marks, you can kind of get the sense of, well, this person's not even close and this one's way through and, and, and try and bring them into that line that you're looking for, okay? No, not trying to, trying to make your head spin by any means, because I understand, I mean, I spent five years coaching with Bill Jurgens, who at the time was the top technician in the country. And I was in the boathouse 12 hours a day, and I had the biggest headache for five years. And so I, I know you can go crazy with the rigging. Yeah. As Corzo was saying, as Chris Corzo was saying, simplify. This will help simplify. Find a place for your feet 
these tracks adjust, adjust those tracks so you're within reason for the hips, that's done. And then just move the foot stretchers so your kids are in a good spot with their shoes. Okay? This is the catch length here. This is where Kendall, if she's stroking, this is where her oar breaks them, right here with her hips right there. And that, that's pretty normal. That's not a bad distance. And you can see it, it has happened when the cocks and ducks down to see something in the head. They only do that once or twice. <laughs> like with flyweight women in here, that's not going to work out well because they're going to be way up here. So this is something to keep in mind that when you measure height, for some of you, I know you're going to be switching. Okay, the men go out at 3 to 5 or 3 to 4.30 in this boat, and then the gals go out in the exact same boat. I saw Kevin Sowers win uh, the Sierra Championship, won the women's eighth, and came right back and won the men's eighth, this is a long time ago, in the exact same boat, within two hours of each other. And he did one little trip. The guys rode first, the women worked after him, and he put seat pads under the gals. That was there when he did it on the dock. Gave seat pads go, and they won. It's like paying back. It's just a little trick, but the height is the height is important, and it plays really into how comfortable your kids are. If your kids aren't comfortable, they're going to roll like crap. And if you don't believe me, put put a golf <laughs> shoe up, right side up, on your seat, sit on it, and drive home. See what an enjoyable ride that is. Okay. <laughs> So the height is really, really critical. There's a lot of different ways to measure it. Some people measure it through this right here. I mean, there's a whole bunch of different ways. I've got stuff up on the web. I don't want to uh, run through that right now because I feel like I'm keeping you guys hostage and I certainly don't mean to look the water at the release. And if you can do that, then you're pretty good to go. Right? And then as you get going, you can make little changes. Does that help? What about the I'm here if you want to, if you feel like oh, I gotta go or something, that's I don't want